Right now, crews are working to build a new bridge over part of I-25 in Pueblo. It's been 10 days since a train derailed there, killing a semi-truck driver. Investigators say a broken rail likely caused the derailment. Then the bridge collapsed when the train derailed. BNSF Railway says that it still isn't uh, sure a who actually owns that bridge, but it will be installing the new one since it's responsible for inspections and maintenance. BNSF says the new bridge will take about three weeks to install. A chiropractor in Fort Collins is facing criminal charges accused of inappropriately touching two women at his practice. And now investigators say they think there could be more women in the same boat. Dr. Brian Rorick turned himself in last week. He and his wife run Peak Performance Chiropractic on Oak Ridge Drive in Fort Collins. Police say they started their investigation in January when a woman told them Rorick touched her inappropriately during several visits. Investigators later found out another woman made similar allegations to the state's Board of Chiropractic Examiners in 2019. It's not clear if anything ever came from that complaint, but four years later, police say there is evidence of a crime. Warwick is now facing two felony charges of unlawful sexual contact. Investigators are worried he did this to more women, and they're asking anyone with information to call Fort Collins police. New overnight in the Israel-Hamas war. The United Nations says if it doesn't get more fuel immediately, it will have to majorly cut back on relief efforts in Gaza. Hospitals are over capacity and will have to shut down without fuel for electricity. Yesterday was the deadliest day yet. 700 people were killed in Gaza in one day alone. And Israel launched more airstrikes overnight. All across the world, people have been calling for a ceasefire to get aid into Gaza as the humanitarian crisis there keeps growing. Right now, several countries, including the U.S., are calling for Hamas to release hostages. Hamas says that they will only release them for food and fuel, and they're asking for a pause so that they can get all the hostages in one place. Israel says it won't let that happen. Today, the full House of Representatives is set to vote on the newest Republican nominee for speaker. This time, Mike Johnson from Louisiana. He's the Republicans' fourth nominee. The one before him lasted just a few hours. The number three Republican in the House, Minnesota's Tom Emmer, dropped out less than three hours after being nominated by a majority of Republicans. So now it's on to Johnson. He is an election denier and appears to have the support of holdouts who wouldn't support a nominee who voted to certify the 2020 election. Colorado Republican Ken Buck was a holdout against a previous speaker candidate, Jim Jordan, because Jordan denied the results of the 2020 election. But late last night, Buck told CNN he will support Johnson, even though he is an election denier as well. Johnson will need a simple majority to get the seat. Today, former President Donald Trump says he will be back in court in New York for his civil fraud trial. Yesterday, Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, testified. It was the first time in five years the two of them have been in the same room. Cohen told the court that he had a role in preparing Trump's annual financial statements. He says Trump would tell him what he wanted his net worth to be. Then Cohen and others would inflate the value of Trump's assets to get to that higher inaccurate net worth. Trump calls the whole trial rigged. The lawsuit to keep Trump off the 2024 ballot in Colorado is headed to trial next week. A judge has repeatedly dismissed efforts to have the case thrown out. Six Republican and unaffiliated voters in a liberal group out of Washington, D.C. want Secretary of State Jenna Griswold to deem Trump ineligible for office. The lawsuit is based in part on the 14th Amendment that bans candidates from running for office if they take part in an insurrection. The Colorado GOP is fighting the lawsuit alongside the Trump team. They say the party will not hold a primary if Trump isn't on the ballot. President Joe Biden won't be on the primary ballot in New Hampshire. Right now, New Hampshire is always the first state in the country to hold a primary. The Democratic National Committee wants South Carolina to be the first, so Biden says he has to follow in line with what the DNC wants. Voters will still be able to write Biden's name in, but the New Hampshire Secretary of State calls it a mistake to leave Biden's name off entirely. New Hampshire has not set a date yet for its primary election. New this morning, a new leader of the FAA could be on the job as soon as today. The Senate unanimously approved Biden's nominee, Michael Whitaker. Whitaker used to be a deputy FAA administrator, so he's already familiar with the agency. The FAA is trying to solve two big problems right now, staffing shortages and multiple incidents of planes nearly colliding. Right now, an Alaska Airlines pilot is facing 83 attempted murder counts, plus even more charges after he tried to shut down the engines of a plane mid-flight. Joseph Emerson was off duty at the time. He told officers that he was having a nervous breakdown when he tried to take over the cockpit. Nobody was hurt, and the plane's pilot landed safely. Alaska Air says they had no issues with Emerson in the past.
It's 6.07 right now and new this morning. We're seeing a push for change in the workforce to focus on the environment, and that comes with new job opportunities that didn't even exist a few years ago. Yeah, our Anusha Roy is live in Denver outside the city and county building. And Anusha, some of this change is coming from within the city, and people are taking advantage of the opportunities, it sounds like. Yeah, Jordan, they definitely are, right? I mean, in Denver and really across the country right now, we're seeing this push to make buildings more green for more people to drive EVs, but you have to have a workforce to go with that to support that kind of change. And that's really what the city is focusing on, right? Everything from solar technicians to people working on renewable energy and making these jobs competitive and making sure that the pay is competitive as well. So the city of Denver launched nine different training programs last year and said so far 789 people have enrolled Half of them are youth, and they also said that some people were experiencing homelessness or are lower income that then enrolled in these training programs. They've also been seeing some decent interest from electricians, people in construction who know that these changes are coming, but they said they really need to see more, especially with the workforce shortage, and they are very much focusing on targeting people who may not even know that they qualify for these jobs. So we're really working with populations that have a lot of barriers to entry into these programs and careers. So uh, oftentimes there's um, issues with high school diplomas or GEDs. Um, they might have justice evolved uh, backgrounds. So we're really making sure that individuals that have these um, systemic barriers that we're, we're reducing them, we're supporting them, and we're getting them the quality credentials that they need. So no, they do not need four-year degrees. Um, oftentimes they don't even really need any experience, just, just the interest into the field. So people are actually paid to go into these training programs and then they're placed into apprenticeships or full time jobs. All of this is being paid through voters who approved a sales tax in 2020 that is bringing in millions of dollars into the city every year, ever since we have been tracking how that money is being spent here in Denver. Coming up at 7 a.m. on KTVD, we're going to be taking a look at how many jobs in Colorado are in the clean energy sector right now. All right, some interesting work they're doing. Welcome back, Anusha, by the way. Thank you for that. And one thing you want to know about the weather today are the stats. We're going for a high of 72 degrees today. That's 10 degrees above the normal high of 62, 34 the normal low. The record high, 84 degrees from 2017. And the record low from 150 years ago, one degree.